What's going on everyone, Mike here and in this video we're going to have a look at the Asus VivoBook S551. This is a 15 inch mainstream ultrabook, which means that it's going to be fairly affordable while offering a touchscreen, fast hardware, long battery life and a sleek body. This clip will however tell you a lot more about this laptop so let's get going. But first let's see what's inside the box. The S551 comes with a standard eco-friendly cardboard packaging, nothing fancy here. Besides the notebook itself, found inside this white synthetic wrapping, you'll also have the power brick in the box and some paperwork that's actually missing here as this is a test sample. And that's about it, so let's move on to the actual review. The S551 is a fairly large laptop, with a 15.6 inch screen. However, this one is an ultrabook, like I mentioned in the beginning, and that's why it is quite slick. In fact, it's thinner than my Lenovo X220, as you can see here. On the other hand, this VivoBook is not the lightest lad on the market as it is mostly meant to offer plenty for the money, so you shouldn't be surprised that it weighs about 5.5 pounds, which barely sets it apart from a regular laptop. But at least it's fairly sturdy and definitely a looker in its class I might say. The inner body is cast from a solid piece of metal, a nicely textured sheet of aluminum covers the hood and you'll only find plastic on the underbelly. Speaking of that, there are barely any cuts down here except for a small cooling grill on the side and the speakers placed towards the front. The battery is encased and the components are not that easily accessible, still with a proper screwdriver you can remove the 10 or so screws holding the entire plastic back in place and have a peek at the internals. Here's how the hardware looks, but I'll tell you more about this in the written review on ultrabookreview.com, look for the link in the description just below this video. Anyway, with the laptop back in shape, let's have a look around the sides. Most of the ports are lined on the left, as you can see here, while on the right there's the optical unit, another USB port and the card reader. And yes, there's no VGA port on this laptop if that's something you care about. Besides this, you'll find some status LEDs on the front lip, while a bunch of others are placed above the keyboard near the power button. And now that we open this laptop, you'll actually like it even more. The silver aluminum body creates a nice contrast with the black keyboard and you'll appreciate the wide and sturdy palm rest or the slightly beveled edges that won't cut through your wrist when using this laptop for a while. You'll also like the large screen hinge, able to firmly keep the 15 inch display in place and that's even more important as this is an Asus VivoBook we have here, thus it comes with a touch screen that you'll keep poking every day. A fairly good touch screen by the way, one that responded snappy and accurate to my taps, gestures or swipes. However, except for that, the screen is overall average at best. Asus bundled a 15.6 inch TFT panel on their S551 with 1366 by 768 pixel resolution, so it's not the sharpest LED on the market. That aside, the viewing angles are pretty poor, as with most TFT displays and the reflective glass on top of the panel doesn't help either. In fact, this laptop is going to be a complete pain to use in strong light, because of those reflections, but also because the panel is not very bright. However, as long as you keep it indoors and away from direct light, you should find it good enough. The contrast is alright and the colors quite accurate and decently vibrant for this class. Still, I was expecting better, but maybe my expectations are too high. After all, Asus used a similar display on the 14 inch S400 last year and that unit got quite popular. What do you think? Anyway, next to the screen, the keyboard and trackpad are extremely important for me on a laptop. The ones on this Asus VivoBook are fairly good. The keys are large and properly spaced and the feedback is overall alright, although the travel is a bit too shallow and because of that you will miss strokes from time to time. But once you get used to the overall experience, I think you're going to find this keyboard good enough. It does include a numpad area with full size keys and you'll notice that the arrow keys, while smaller than the others, are slightly separated from the entire block, something that I came to appreciate. On the other hand, it's worth mentioning that this is not a backlit keyboard and my unit had the European layout, which I for one am not a big fan of. Oh, and you'll notice there's a blue key in the numpad section, that one launches the Asus console, a neat interface that grabs together several Asus bundled apps. As for the trackpad, it's large, smooth and nicely separated from the palm rest. It's a click pad of course and it tends to be accurate and reliable most of the time, with occasional exceptions. It supports all sorts of gestures, those embedded within Windows 8 that require you to drag from the sides or many others with up to 3 fingers, configurable via the smart gesture software bundled by Asus. So overall this clickpad is ok, not perfect but definitely usable. Anyway, enough about that for now, let's push the power button and see what this laptop can do. I have the top S551 configuration for this test, with an Intel Core i7-4500U processor, 8GB of RAM, 
hybrid storage and an Nvidia 740M graphics chip. Yes, there's a new LV platform pushing this laptop, but it's part of Intel's Haswell family, just recently launched and one of the fastest available right now in this class. That's why this VivoBook is pretty snappy, although I did encounter some occasional stuttering that I blame on the slow hard drive. For more about that, plus benchmark results and extra details about the hardware and upgrade possibilities, you should once again head towards the written review. Anyway, this Asus S551 managed to deal fine with most of the things I threw at it, from basic tasks like text editing and browsing, to more complex activities like editing some videos and even running some recent games, as you'll find from another clip that I will publish on the channel in a few days. The S551 can be a decent multimedia companion as well, being able to play smoothly all sorts of full HD content. The overall screen quality does have its impact, but at least the speakers are pretty good, punchy and fairly clear. Here for yourselves. The notebook does run Windows 8, so you do get the touch-friendly interface and the apps within Microsoft's Windows Store, next to the classic desktop mode and standard legacy software. Asus bundles some extras as well, things like Smart Audio, Cloud Storage, Splendid and several others, but while some of them could be useful, none are actually something you can't live without. Alright, so we know by now that the S551 can plow through plenty of chores, and you'll be glad to find that it does that while running cool and almost completely silent. Even when heavily pushing this ultrabook and even when running stress tests, the body did not get more than warm and softer like hardware info showed the CPU reaching temperatures of around 70 degrees Celsius, which is actually great. The cooling system is never too loud, not even in these conditions mentioned before. Air is sucked from the small cut on the bottom and blown through the hinge. I do have to mention though that the fan inside keeps spinning all the time, so this laptop is never completely silent. On top of that, you'll hear the hard drive cranking as well, from time to time. Those aside, don't forget the S551 is an ultrabook, so it needs to be portable if required. And it is. The 50 watt hour battery inside this unit, combined with the Haswell platform and the dual graphics solution, can push this machine for many hours on a charge. I'll tell you more about that in the written review, but for now you should know that this can offer north of 6 hours of HD video playing, about 100 minutes of gaming and between 4 to 5 hours of everyday use. Anyway, enough said, let's talk prices for it a bit. The S551 will be available in stores by the beginning of August, and based on what I know right now, it will sell for between 750 and 1100 US dollars. The configuration we had here is going to be the most expensive, while for 750 dollars you're getting a Core i3 processor with 4GB of RAM and no dedicated graphics. The S551 will be available in several different versions, and I'll tell you more about those in the written review. So as we get close to the end of this clip, the S551 starts looking more and more like a winner. It's not just slick, it's decently powerful too, as well as efficient. And there are some other things that you will enjoy about it. For instance, I could mention the decent webcam you'll find above the screen, or right for quick chats. Or I could praise the fast and reliable wireless module, although you should know that this unit does not offer support for the latest 802.11 AC wireless standard. Bottom point, there are plenty of things to like about the Asus VivoBook S551, and while this is not the kind of laptop I would be interested in, I'm pretty sure many of you will. If you want a decently fast, thin and good looking 15 inch laptop that can run for several hours on a charge without getting hot or noisy, this one should be on your list. However, I do find the S551 a bit too expensive based on what we know right now. Think about the Asus N550 for instance, that offers a full voltage processor, more powerful graphics, a backlit keyboard and an IPS touchscreen for about $100-$150 to $150 extra without being a lot larger or heavier. And to be frank, I'd pick that one over this VivoBook in a second. That's why I'm pretty sure the S551 is going to be cheaper than announced at launch, or quickly get $100-$200 to $200 price cuts soon after. And when that happens, this VivoBook is going to become an option you have to consider in its class, despite the things Asus should have done better. And yes, I'm mostly talking about the screen here. With that in mind, it's time to end this review. 
Thanks for watching and like I already mentioned, check out the article on ultrabookreview.com as well. You'll find plenty of details in there that were not included in the video. And of course, if you found this useful, make sure to leave a thumbs up, share it to your friends and subscribe to my channel for my future updates. I'll catch you soon.